This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so we, we have access now to a news conference that was given yesterday by the NTSB. And this is something that was clearly used by a reporter who wrote the Bloomberg article that we referenced in last night's video, a reference to VDR. Now, we did not have access to this press conference before making last night's video. So what we're gonna do today is, in this video, we're going to run a section of that press conference of a few minutes, it's a long press conference, and we're gonna give additional information. Uh, we're gonna pause the video and give additional information to explain how the report from Bloomberg omitted an important point made by the NTSB. Now this means that something I said in last night's video was, was incorrect and we'll address that right now. Uh, this new information actually clears up the speculation that the VDR may have been deliberately switched off uh, or that data is mysteriously missing. Now, before we roll the tape, uh, we've got a couple of things from the press conference uh, to clear up some erroneous reporting from various different places. Uh, last night, we, we said there was a discrepancy in how many crew were on board. Uh, the, the management company gave a different number, but the um, NTSB said there were 21 crew members on board plus two pilots and they said it was a total of 23 souls on board at the time of the accident. Um, some information about the VDR, the regulations say, I've seen some, re some uh, comments that people were saying that the VDR can delete data after 12 hours and you know it just rolls after 12 hours, that is incorrect. Regulations say the VDR must record 30 days of data. At, at the time of this press conference, the NTSB had access to six hours from midnight until 6 a.m., which covers the accident but they said they, they, were, they would have it in due course the full 30 days. Um, so they just didn't have it before this, this press conference started. Also, the, press, uh, the VDR records the following data. Audio, recordings from VHF radios, limited sensor data, ship speed, RPM, heading, rudder angle, plus some alarm information. So we'll play the NTSB press conference and we'll stop to talk about the important points. Now in the press conference, it starts with the NTSB chair, uh, Jennifer Hammondy, and the other person speaking is Marcel Muse. He's the other representative from the NTSB talking at the press conference. And as they say at the beginning of this press conference, that everything, all the information is preliminary and subject to final val validation. In other words, it can change in the course of the investigation. So let's roll the video. The Times Express below, as recorded by the VDR and converted to local Eastern Daylight Time. All information is preliminary and subject to final validation. By 107, the ship had entered the channel, and by 124, the ship was underway on a true heading of approximately 141 in the Fort McHenry Channel at a speed of overground of approximately 8 knots, or 9.2 miles per hour. At 0124 and 59 seconds, Numerous audible alarms were recorded on the ship's audio, bridge audio. About the same time, VDR sensor data ceased recording. Okay, so we'll pause here. And if we look at the live stream footage, that basically lines up with the footage of the first blackout, the, time, the timing that he gives out in that press conference. Now, please note that this is critical. He says the VDR sensor data stops recording, right? Okay, back to the video. However, the VDR audio continued to record using the redundant power source. Okay, so we'll stop again. The VDR audio continues recording. Now, this is where the reporter in the Bloomberg article that we referenced last night gets, uh, gets it wrong. He misunderstood what he was hearing, as he probably has no technical background of shipping. So what does that mean? And now, once you hear this, you, will be able, you won't be able to unhear it, so to speak. Now, the VDR continued recording audio data, but stopped recording sensor data. Why? Well, it stopped recording sensor data because there was no sensor data to record. They were in a blackout. The equipment on the bridge that sends data uh, to the VDR stopped functioning at this point. Or there was some part of the, the integrated bridge that stopped working when there was a blackout, which stopped the data from going to the VDR. But the VDR continued to record, as he says, due to a redundant power source. Now, this is the personal UPS or uninterruptible power supply that I was talking about in last night's video. This is the VDR's last source of backup power if everything else fails, which apparently in this instance it did. 
Now it should be noted at this point that the VDR is a single unit. It's not separated. All the data is coming to one unit. So it's not possible to simply switch off the data, but continue with the audio. Uh, so this proves the VDR was never switched off and continued recording the entire time. All right, so we'll go back to the video. At around 0, 01, 26 and two seconds, the VDR resumed recording sensor data. And during this time, there were steering commands and rudder orders recorded on the audio. So we'll pause again. So the sensor data returns as the power is restored to the vessel and the steering commands and rudder orders that he mentions are from the pilot giving audible commands to the crew. It's been recorded on the ship's audio. Again, if we go back to the video, we see that the power comes back on around that same time, right? So it all seems to line up. Now, so data once again starts being fed to the VDR, which has remained on the entire time. At around 0, 01, 26 and 39 seconds, the ship's pilot made a general VHF radio call for tugs in the vicinity to assist. About this time, the pilot association dispatcher phoned the MDTA duty officer regarding the blackout. Around 0, 01, 27 and four seconds, the pilot ordered the dally to drop the port anchor and additional, uh, ordered additional steering commands. Around 127 and 25 seconds, the pilot issued a radio call over the VHF radio, reporting that the dolly had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. Okay, we'll pause again. This lines up with the video pretty much in terms of times. This is after the second blackout occurred. Again, in last night's video, the report we quoted from Bloomberg said the pilot made a call on HF, it's a small point, which I said was unusual because he should have been using VHF. Well. It would appear the reporter misheard that, as he clearly says, the pilot called on VHF. This is why I always say that it's so vital that you always go to the source and not listen to others, because even if they don't intend to mislead you, they can mislead you if they give you the wrong information. I'll go back to the video. Around 0129, the ship's speed over ground was recorded at just under seven knots or eight miles per hour. From this moment until approximately 1.29 and 33 seconds, the VDR audio recorded sounds consistent with the collision of the bridge. Additionally, around this time, MDTA dash cameras show the bridge lights extinguishing. Additional analysis of the VDR audio in comparison with other time sources will be needed to determine the exact time of contact between the dolly and the bridge. At, at 1.29 and 39 seconds, the pilot reported the bridge down over the VHF radio to the Coast Guard. Okay, so I hope that clears up the misreporting in the press and now you understand what was happening based on the information we've received from the NTSB, which is, of course is based on the data that they've recovered from the, from the VDR plus AIS data plus the video data. All right, so I'll move on to another thing that uh, came up in the comments of last night's video. Uh, I talked about the, in last night's video, I said that the pilot is on the, when he's on the bridge, he's in command over the captain. Quite a number of people disagreed with this. So I want to explain, everything's not so black and white, right? Now the captain is always ultimately responsible for his or her vessel. When the pilot is on board, they're working together to ensure the safe passage through the area for which the pilot is required to be on board, right? The pilot gives commands to the, the bridge crew, the na navigational bridge crew on the ship, and they obey. Now, if a pilot gave a command that the captain deemed dangerous, of course, he, he's gonna, he, he could possibly say to the crew to not obey that command. Most likely scenario would be that the pilot and captain will, will have a conversation until they see things the same way. Unless this happens, it's effectively the pilot's bridge. Now, in my 20 plus years of experience at sea, I've seen some pilotages where the captain continues to give instructions to the helm and the pilot just stands and observes. Uh, this is usually when the pilot knows the captain frequents the area often and the captain is competent in that area. Now, however, if the pilot sees a mistake, he will offer a correction. Um, other pilots, you know, they'll call the shots whilst on the bridge. So you can see, yes, the captain is still in charge but the pilot is given commands. I'll give you an example, I'll give you a metaphor. Driving on the motorway, highway, a cop pulls in front and tells you to follow him into a lay-by. So who's in charge? 
you still have control of your car, but you must follow the cop, right? Now, if the cop tries to guide you into the road of an oncoming truck, then of course you can stop and you should stop, but the cop is in control. So let's go back to the transcript of the press conference. Uh, 126.39, the ship's pilot made a general call for tugs in the area to assist. 127.04, the pilot ordered the dally to drop the port anchor and ordered additional steering commands. 127.25, the pilot issued a radio call over the VHF, reporting that Dali had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. So you tell me who was in command on this bridge. So this is the one of the reasons that we have pilots because their local knowledge will expedite uh, things in an emergency, right? He knows exactly which radio frequency to be on. He knows who to call. He knows the quickest things. He knows the best way to navigate that uh, passage that he's in. Unfortunately here, because of the power loss, they were up, they, you know, they didn't have the ability to avoid the impact with the bridge. All right, if you want to see the, if you want to go to the source and watch the full press conference, I'll put a link in the description. It's on the NTSB uh, website. So, all right, guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped you uh, understand things more. And uh, yeah, I hope it's, it helps to uh, get rid of a lot of these nonsensical uh, uh, conspiracy theories that are out there currently. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.